Cinema. Appears to be in pretty good cosmetic condition. I did notice there are homebrew switch the adjustment procedure for the idle bias. We can continue with this repair. We'll see you again soon on Solid State Cinema. Welcome to Solid State Cinema, where we systematically solve silicone situations. Today we have a Hitachi IA600 integrated amplifier with one channel out. Therefore one channel works and the other is blowing fuses. The owner remembers having this amplifier back in high school on his basketball team and even back then that channel was out. So it is time for Solid State Cinema to heal the Hitachi with silicone and solder. All right, so here is the Hitachi IA600 integrated amplifier. This is actually the first one that's ever came through the doors of Solid State Cinema. Appears to be in pretty good cosmetic condition. I did notice that four of these push-on knobs are made of wood painted silver. Pretty cool. They serve the purpose. We're not here to look at knobs. We are here to evaluate why one of the channels are not working. I'm going to give you an inside view and then I'm going to show you an easy way to determine which of the transistors on these output sections is defective. All right, let's do a quick guided tour inside of the Hitachi amplifier. Here we have our preamp board, power supply filter cap. These are the output coupling caps that go to each speaker. So these two output modules go through those caps and then see your 8 ohm speaker as a load. Over here is one of the power supply modules, power transformer. This is my left channel and my right channel. From what I've gathered, the left channel is operational, this channel is not. As a matter of fact, one of the fuses is removed, which points at the defective channel. All right, I'm going to flip this around. And I'm going to grab my meter and show you guys a quick way to determine which of the output transistors has shorted. So as I stated before, the owner said a channel is out and the unit is blowing fuses. So the last thing that you want to do is put in a new fuse and fire this amp up. You're just going to cause more damage. So we need to eliminate the short before we go any further. So here is a quick way to determine which of the final output transistors is shorted. You're going to take meter on ohms. In this case I've got my Hioki. Negative lead is going to go to chassis. Okay. So if I were to find a short, the meter, as you can see, is going to go to under an ohm. Right. So these are the collectors of the transistors and they have high voltage applied. In this case probably around 40 volts DC. So obviously that should not be shorted to ground and if they are that would blow a fuse. So this is a good channel. I'm going to go to each collector. You can see that my ohm meter is still showing open. Next transistor. Look at there. That guy is shorted. And that one appears to be okay. So it looks like we have found our shorted transistor. But to verify that, we are going to take the screws out, remove the transistor, and test it on the bench. Well, this Hitachi has a nice design because you can actually lift the modules out, get the screws out, and then these TO3 transistors simply plug in. So just kind of cradle them in your hand. Be careful of this piece of mica, which is an insulator, and the transistor will pop right out. So let's put it on the bench and buzz out just this transistor. For this next part of the demonstration I went ahead and removed both of the output transistors. This is the one that showed shorted and this is its companion. Remember these work together to give you output on that channel so if this one shorted it could have damaged the other one. So we're going to check that with our meter. And Right now we're set up in ohms because we know one was shorted. So if I go to the case, remember we had a short from case to ground. I touch one of the leads. This guy is definitely shorted. But for the good transistor, what you want to do is put your meter in the diode test function. Okay, so what that does is it applies 1.5 volts across the diode junctions 
that are in the transistor and it will actually turn them on and you will see the voltage drop. So what we're looking for are two voltage drops of approximately 0.5 to 0.7 volts DC. All right. So this transistor is a TO3 case style. The case is the collector. This is the base and this is the emitter. So when I test these junctions, you should see the meter go to approximately 0.5. So now I'm going to do the base to emitter. 0.5. Now I'm going to go base to collector. And then if I go from collector to emitter, it should stay open. So this is a good transistor. Now let's do the same thing on the shorted one. So let's go base to emitter. You can see that junction's okay. Let's go base to collector. You see that's okay, but now if I want emitter collector, shorted. So that is a bad transistor. The Hitachi uses a pair of 2SC 1030s on each channel. I looked these up on eBay. You can get them for about 10 bucks a piece. I just happen to have a good spare. So we're going to put a new set of outputs in this amp and see if it'll fire up. All right, I put a new set of finals in on the channel that was defective. The other channel is as it was configured before. I'm using a pair of 10 ohm resistors to simulate speakers. I'm going to bring the amp up on a variac and we are going to measure the voltages on these finals and see if they appear to be the same. So in this system with two NPN transistors in series, you're going to see the applied voltage and then at the midway point between these two guys, you should see half of that voltage. And that is where it couples to the speakers. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the variac. So there's about half voltage. What I like to do is just touch these finals and see if I'm feeling any heat. Now, let's check for presence of voltage. So there's 26. 47, 26, 47, okay? So we have our applied voltage here. It divides in half, and we're seeing the midpoint on the other transistor. So let's go ahead and bring her right on up to the applied voltage. So we got 65, about 31, 65, and about 30. So they appear to be balancing out. And they're not getting warm at all. So that's a good sign. Now it's time to check the bias. And there's an easy way to do that. Remember, these guys have what they call the idle bias. I could not find any documentation on that, but there is a way to check it. So we know that this was the good channel, and this was the bad channel. I'm going to remove the fuse, put my meter in current mode, and we're going to compare the good channel to the repaired channel. I've had the amp on for about 10 minutes. Still monitoring our temperatures. Let's take a look at our voltages again. 63.1, 29.8, 63.1, So they look pretty darn equal. All right, for the fun of it, let's go ahead and pull the fuses and look at the idle current on each channel. Okay, I've removed the fuse for channel one and I have my meter set in current and I'm actually strapped across where the fuse was. So now my meter We'll monitor the current going to channel 1. I'm going to turn on the power. I'm seeing about 17 milliamps of current. Let's switch over and test the other channel. Alright, here is the idle current on the repaired channel. There's a bias pod here where I'm supposed to be able to dial in the current. As you can see, we're already double what the other channel was. And it's creeping up so there's some other issue on this board so here's the question of the day guys what is the idle current supposed to be 
on the Hitachi IA600. So it appears we have not solved the situation here at Solid State Cinema on the Hitachi IA600 integrated amplifier. I was hoping for the best, but it didn't appear as though we got the best. But what I need is documentation. Somebody out there must have documentation on this amplifier, a schematic, and especially how to adjust the idle current. I need it. You guys provide it, and we'll have a part two to the Hitachi amplifier. The question of the day is, do you suffer from cracked, dirty technician fingers? Well, here's the solution. Well, what's the solution? Well, you're soaking in it. Ritz? No! Premium saltine oyster crackers. A salty, sanitized sensation. So great sorrow for the Hitachi amplifier. It continues to suffer its silicone syndrome. But I need information. So if you can provide me a schematic and hopefully the adjustment procedure for the idle bias, we can continue with this repair. We'll see you again soon on Solid State Cinema.